There are a surprising number of historical anomalies, which scrutinizes the current, often outdated explanations as to the possible origins of human civilization. Anomalies which suddenly bring the age of countless, inexplicable ancient ruins found all over the globe into question. There exist inner circles of historical specialists who have quietly been battling it out over the authenticity of groundbreaking finds made over the ages, a smoldering cauldron of unavoidable controversies with frequent yet often failed attempts at discreditation. Ancient discoveries, argued over behind closed doors, often within prestigious institutions, each and all with vested interests on the retention of already established paradigms, illusionary or not, with the Glozel affair being of no exception. Possibly one of the most explosive discoveries which could be unleashed on the historical academic community. A controversial congregation of artifacts of vastly varying dates would be an understatement. Rows of ancient, technologically advanced uparts created by groups originating from all corners of the world, some dating back to the Neolithic, with an array of other periods present, all laid undisturbed for untold millennia, a seemingly modern-age historical impossibility. A number of independent investigators continue to entertain the idea that academically funded historians accidentally stumbled upon and subsequently partially exposed to the world a perfectly preserved pre-Atlantis antediluvian museum. One so controversial, if the battles over carbon dating be won, by those who support said theory, it would turn our chronological understandings of man upside down. Arguments over the authenticity of the discovery raged on for many decades until the outbreak of the World War in 1939. Multiple lawsuits were launched, five international battles were undertaken, all to either prove or disprove the site's authenticity. Yet, it wasn't until 1974 when a Glenn Daniel, professor of archaeology at Cambridge University, took another, more significant look at the Glozell Affair's artifacts. Although with the clear intention of proving through carbon and other forensic testing that the true ages would ultimately reveal a fakery. Unfortunately, the complete opposite occurred. What was doubly bad for Daniel regarding these peer-reviewed results was that the finds, one luckily buried by the war, had now been plucked from the archives and back into the forefront in the academic field of discussion, yet now with no way of receiving dismissal. In 2019, another examination and scrutinization of the original tests was undertaken, and they held up. So, at a public symposium on archaeometry at Oxford University, details of further work undertaken by McCarroll of Edinburgh and Maydahl, Denmark, claim to show that the age of the ceramics alone is unquestionably great and authentic. This is a site which is undoubtedly incredibly important, and one we will definitely be exploring again in the near future. We find the Glozel Affair highly compelling. There are many unusual artifacts that can now be thankfully found within countless private collections all over the world all of them currently unexplained by modern science. Stones made from pure oxygen, metal objects created in a zero-g environment, unexplained glass cups, slabs and tools, the list grows, and our next artifact of interest could have even once resided within the legendary city of Atlantis. 47 pieces of a mysterious alloy many have attributed to a metal once known as orichalcum. A metal, many say, was only ever found within the once highly advanced city of Atlantis. Discovered within a shipwreck off the coast of Sicily, they were found during an expedition to a wreck believed to be over 2,600 years old. The ship was previously explored in 2015 when underwater archaeologists found 39 ingots of another mysterious metal, the details of which not yet released to the public. 
This trip, however, yielded an ancient jar, two Corinthian helmets, and the 47 lumps of ancient orichalcum, said to have been smelted upon the fabled island of Atlantis. Plato specifically described this rare metal as having been mined there. He even described a temple dedicated to Poseidon, having an entire pillar made from orichalcum. Interestingly, after the discovery in 2005, officials began to conceal the true identity of this mysterious metal, attributing other metals, such as copper and gold, found at the site as orichalcum. News Corp Australia also reported that tradition had it that orichalcum was made of copper, gold, and silver, this statement having no historical accuracy whatsoever. Furthermore, the metal found by the shipwreck team was said to have matched the ancient descriptions of orichalcum. Are they really surviving artifacts from the lost city of Atlantis? They are undoubtedly incredible ancient artifacts and compelling evidence to support the past existence of a highly advanced civilization that once flourished here upon our planet. What exactly is orichalcum? And why is it mentioned within so many ancient texts pertaining to the past existence of Atlantis? And why are the dive team and the subsequent researchers of their finds so convinced of the alloy's identity we find the discovery highly compelling? Our last video covered the astonishing ancient city found in Sri Lanka, which was somehow built atop an enormous rock formation. Known as Lion's Rock, it is a testament to the ancients' capabilities and determination. And our next location is just as incredible. Known as Nan Madal, it is an ancient site located within the middle of an ocean near to the Mariana Trench. What makes Nan Madal so incredible is the fact that the entire city was once built upon the water. An entire series of artificial islands, canals, and fortified city limits. What's more, the entire location is built entirely from enormous blocks of basalt and coral. Built using a unique set of sophisticated techniques not found anywhere else on Earth. The site's supposed original name was Saun Nan Lang, or Reef of Heaven, and according to Gene Ashby, in his book Pompeii, An Island Argosy, the ruined city is one of today's greatest archaeological enigmas and is sometimes actually called Atlantis or the Eighth Wonder of the World or even the Venice of the Pacific. According to academia, Nan Madal was the ceremonial and political seat of the Saudalur dynasty which unites the islands of Pompeii's estimated 25,000 people until as recently as 1628. Set apart between the main island of Pompeii and Tenwen Island, it was a scene of human activity as early as the 1st or 2nd century AD, with the perplexing megalithic architecture apparent only beginning in 1200 AD. However, comprising of almost 100 stone and coral-built platforms atop artificial islands separated by narrow channels, enclosed by an outer seawall, Nan Madal is an engineering marvel. A truly mammoth undertaking that, yet despite the enormity of the undertaking at such a distant time within history, there exists no records as to when, or most importantly how, Nan Madal was ever built. Additionally, there is no evidence of any quarries on any of the nearby islands or indeed the reefs surrounding the site. Where did these enormous rocks come from? How were they transported there? And how, or indeed why, was the site constructed on top of the reef? For a technologically primitive people, apparently placed a mere 1500 years in the past, to somehow have created this entire artificial floating city made from enormous pieces of coral and basalt foundation, using techniques apparently not known prior to construction, yet somehow successfully constructing buildings that have lasted well over millennia, seems a rather ridiculous and extremely unlikely premise. Additionally, to have no evidence of a quarry anywhere to be found makes the whole complex that much more confusing. The total area of the enclosure is around 75 hectares, 
walls were as high as 15 meters and up to 5 meters thick. The average weight of each stone is 5 tons, with some weighing as much as 50 tons. With an estimated total weight of columnar basalt making up the city's construction at around 750,000 metric tons, Nan Madal is undoubtedly an astonishing place.